So maybe the first thing is in our last meeting, we talked about the differences between different kinds of licenses and how to address no assertion licenses. And I'm, and Matt's, not, and I do not believe we've had a meeting since this happened. I think we had a meeting on some other topic where this came up, but I don't think we've had this discussion in this meeting. So I'm gonna share my screen, hopefully the correct one, looks like I did. So this is the risk page. Ignore the best practices not showing up. Uh, that's because we made a change that hasn't propagated to the census data yet. But um, the thing that you'll notice is that the license is declared. Um, now includes the links to the SPDX defined license and all non SPDX licenses are now defined as no assertion. And if you, I don't know if Matt, Matt Snook, can you tell me if it's implemented or not to click on the link to see the files? If the link is there, it should be. Okay. It's not working for me, but that. Um, sometimes you have to open it up and wait for the file, wait for the file to be um, ready to uh, download. Is it, is, oh, it's a, is it something that gets downloaded? Yeah, it gets downloaded uh, as a JSON file. Well, okay, that's just my utter impatience and lack of understanding of how web browsers work. That's at play then. Um, I have it ready if you want me to screen share it. Um, well, it should, if it downloaded, I should be able to like see it. Is it the, where did, where did it Google? It might not have happened with Census, but it, it's on the regular It's on the main repository right now that it's working for me. Uh, by main, do you mean auger.osshealth.io? Yes. I, it, I can it, just it, screen share. I've got it open up right now. Is, if this is in, no, yeah, go ahead and screen, I'll give you the screen share. I did just update the census instance, so it should be whatever the most current thing is, but. I saw Matt Snell's screen share and then I just saw Matt Snell. I see it. Nice. I know this project. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So things under X are fine to be ambiguous in this in my mind for this project. These are all the BSD three clause files. Oh, those are the BSD three clause. Oh, I was hoping you're going for the no assertions. <laughs> those are the fun ones. Thirty one no assertions. These are GPL. Okay. Matt, are there no assertions in Zephyr? Yeah. Yep, there are 149 of them, according to my. Can you show those, Matt? Uh, my mic was muted this entire time. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think uh, that's actually what, what he's showing what us. Guide you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, so this this is just a name discrepancy that I have fixed. It just hasn't been um, just hasn't been updated for this uh, for this um, instance yet. But uh, it does say GPL files because that's the first, um, it, general GPL is the first thing that it catches and it names it. But I just put it to no assertion files in the, in the latest version. Um, oh, okay, because yeah, because some of these things wouldn't be GPL. Yeah, this is, this is actually all files under no assertion. Ah, you okay, it thank you. Right? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can, I can zoom in. Yeah, like I say, yeah. you know. Some of these are just um, files that don't really necessarily have a license declaration or they have one that's ambiguous yeah and those are the ones i'd like to make sure we get cleaned up in the project so this is perfect from that perspective yeah so um if you go to auger.osshealth.io um it should this is on my local host but it should have that change reflected in the next um in the next iteration of the instance yeah um, 
I think I identified why it wasn't downloading for me, Matt. I'll send okay. you a screenshot of my web log. Okay. I'll okay. send it in Slacks. Cause it's, so I think it's if you go to Augur, it doesn't have the um, changes reflected on the actual instance yet. But that was just looking yeah. on my local host for the latest version. Also, something that we added um, in the local host version for sure. risk, if you will give me just a moment. Um, we also added a list of um, licenses that are OSI approved or not OSI approved for the percentage. Cool. This takes a little while to load um, just because it's on my local machine and it's pulling from a very far away database. But uh, let's say we have OSI approved, not OSI approved. So these are the licenses you can find that have that are not OSI approved. Um, and I think one of them was under no assertion, so it didn't show up in the file. But if you go to OSI approved, it shows the count of files that you have approved by OSI. And then this is the list of files that were approved by OSI that are listed in the license declared. Okay. And so the CC01, for instance, would not be considered an OSI approval. Yeah, if I go back to that, um, BSC4 clause UC and then CC01. Yep. Okay, are the two. Yeah. So there. That's good. That's good. Okay, so you'll be eventually showing that in the stats. And yeah, it should. It, I think it's actually, this is the dev branch right now, so we just have to update the instance. Okay. Yeah, nice. yeah. I, I said, yeah, I said, you know, in Slack, I think there's one. Thing okay, there. sounds good. I'll um, look at that after the meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to go and go through those licenses and do some sanity checking, I can. I, I think sanity checking is always a good idea. Okay, make, uh, is, is, is Mac making an instance available to me? I'll, I'll do some clicking around and cross-checking. Sounds good. Okay. And then the, um, So that was one important thing on this working group. Mm -hmm. um, the metric badge status has also been updated to be a bit more robust. Okay. Um, and I think that that's one of the ones, and this is maybe where the next item on the agenda is which uh, metric to possibly work at. Last time we worked on the CII best practices badge mm -hmm. metric definition that's how we spent our time and that it's in the notes but I'll paste it in zoom as well yeah. at, least, uh, at least I thought that's what I was going to do uh, copy. Yeah. Google has changed a number of things they must have been busy oh yeah there was um, holiday they I think they started rolling out what they announced at um, Oh, Google or GitHub are we talking about? Which one? Well, Google oh. changed my ability to right click and copy a link. Now I have to click the copy button. Okay. Um, so this document is a, the one that I did put in there is our best practices badge where we essentially took the, the text, the markdown out of a mm -hmm. template and okay. started filling that in and talking about it last week and got a little bit of clarity i think around what the what the goal is and maybe the thing to check with this group is how how we did with getting the language right around compliance with open source project best practices and noting that um really take the part out at some point we noted there were different batch levels but that may have been edited out oh, okay by someone. So one of the things I think might be really interesting for to get Johan's opinion is for him to go through the CI best practices and see how it matches up with some of the research he's been doing. I think some of the art items he's been calling out are actually aligned up with there in there. Definitely. Okay. Then is that an opening for Johan to talk about? Mm -hmm. Work since bit. I see, since I see, has is, now. <laughs> is his uh, was his assistant still here to help make sure that he's clear? My assistant is uh, at uh, the other assistant. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, if it's not a good time, we have other things. I don't to know. I don't know. Um, so, just to sum up, so George knows all of this. Uh, so, I was talking earlier today with uh, Kate and Jessica and Mike uh, about uh, sustainability um, studies uh, and so on, but I was talking exp explicitly about um, some, some work that I've done during my PhD on community strategies uh, on how uh, companies decides, decide which uh, communities that they should invest in. Yeah. Uh, uh, selecting the communities that are of importance uh, based on their business goals. So looking yeah. at business aspects, uh, also technical aspects, uh, seeing if, the, if uh, the, the community or the project is of importance from the business uh, from line with the business goals and also looking at is there a possibility to gain influence on the development from different community perspectives and then is it important yes is it possible to gain influence yes then uh, based on uh, the interviews we suggest a number of practices that can be applied for the organ organizations or, or uh, to to gain this uh, this influence but so what what we saw in in all of the interviews so we interviewed about 20 uh, open source program officers and community managers what we saw was that um, that it was highlighted that you you should not only consider uh, the needs uh, for influence on uh, on the, the the project but also the need for sustaining or uh, improving the health of the community mm -hmm. uh, so also investing uh, in that end so that kind of sparked my my head to to also dive into the sustainability aspects and uh, that's where me and, and georg are looking at uh, a paper we or uh, we're in in the beginning of uh, of some some research research on on the topic looking from the maintainer perspective mm -hmm. uh, i don't know have you have you talked anything about that georg no, I've not. No, so yeah, so that that's only in the in the in the beginning beginning phase. So, um, uh, what I mean, I I can talk long, long and hard on on that. I, I what I can do is uh, I guess I, I can send you, I can send a link to um, to the paper that ex explains the community strategy thing that I just uh, talked about, and also my thesis that also looks at contribution strategies, uh, what, what kind of business aspects uh, or benefits that uh, a company uh, looks at uh, when, uh, when they're contributing, but also risks, costs, and complexities uh, on the, the other side, if, uh, which maybe could motivate why you shouldn't contribute. I think both papers could be of uh, value to... Uh, the risk perspective, but they maybe also the value group in, in chaos. I, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, I tried to join into these talks, but uh, <laughs> due to uh, due to time zone differences uh, and uh, other oh yeah, and that's hard other, uh, <laughs> aspects. It's kind of hard to to join in. This is definitely uh, a hard European time. I, I I can send you uh, the two, the two papers or, or the thesis, and you and if you're interested, you can have a look and see if uh, see if it's of any value to to the chaos group. But I, I would certainly be interested. I'm curious if you see a direct, I'm trying to draw the line to risk and some of the things that we've talked about with regards to best practices, I suppose, are clearly as aligned with sustainability yeah. being a, a risk. That's, that's I think, what uh, David said, did when he was initially setting up those metrics. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it'd be interesting to understand, you know, a mapping of the factors you've, are there any factors missing in the risk, in the CI best practices that have been identified from the um, Johan's papers perspective. And, you know, should we be trying to work with that community to increase, you know, change, change some things to include other things? Like Is that paper published somewhere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Everything, uh, four out of five papers are published, but the last one is available in, in my thesis. So but I, I'll send you <laughs> the links. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. The other thing, Johan, is um, Zephyr Project is a project that started in 2016 
and that was the one that Matt was just showing. And this project was started by one company initially to and taking it to being a foundation. And I've, I've been with it pretty much since the start and been using it as a way of trying to get the best practices and get it to become a sustainable project. And so last year, Dixie, I gave a keynote on the lessons we've learned from how we apply this effort. And so I'm always looking for new issues to use as a proving ground here. So that project might be, like I say, I'm, I've got, I just got the papers too. I'll have to go through and see if I see any lessons or anything that's different than what she's been doing with the project. Because there's been some very conscious efforts to steer it towards diversity of contributors, reduce the bus factors, things like that. And we, to a large extent, we've succeeded in a lot of these things at this point now. If you actually go and look on the um, contributors um, on GitHub, and you look up edit amongst its peer, it now has the most contributors out of all of it, all the peers. The rate of change going into that repo is now about one, one change an hour. And so I've been around that lane, that rate for the last year. Um, probably slightly increasing, we've gained more contributors coming in. So some of the things we've been doing seem to be effective and successful. Um, and, you know, I'm obviously looking for more good things to do. Uh, for that project. So it's a little bit my, my sandbox to prove things out in my mind. You know, to the extent Sounds that. like a great thing to study. Yeah. Um, just a second. Let me queue up something and I'll show you guys um, what the latest is on that stuff. Since, since Matt gets looked up anyhow. <laughs> um, and I did updates for uh, Leon. So there we go. Let's go to screen share mode. Okay. So there we go. Let's see. It populate itself out. I haven't got it loaded. Oops. So these are um, the competitive ecosystem right now. And I did uh, looked at the total number of commits over the last year. And there was more than 10,000 when I measured this in October. Um, and at the same period, the next closest was our over 4,000, but embed's about seven to 8,000. I've actually got the stats down here. 72,000, sorry. Wow. Okay, so Zephyr's got a fair amount of momentum in terms of the commits that are happening. And the yeah, those are, those are much, much stronger numbers than a couple of years ago. I mean, they weren't bad a couple of years ago, but you kind of achieved your goal of taking over. Well, what's actually sort of showing up is just a second here. Yeah. Look at this. Contributors to the OS. We've yeah. crossed the line now on that yeah. one. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. From and, and, we're, and we're on track probably to cross the line here, although uh, Nautix has gotten a lot more active recently. <laughs> so huh. we'll, see how they, we'll see how that plays itself out. Who are, um, who's behind them? Uh, Gregory Nutt, but I think they're looking at moving underneath the Apache Foundation. They're in the, as an incubator potentially right now. So okay. whether we, we, you know, they may end up moving up, but Apache, the Apache Foundation already has a minute in there as well, so they may, add, they may add a second RTOS, we'll see. The licensing is quite interesting in this one, in the Nutix one too. Mm -hmm. But, and I think Nutix is going to move over onto GitHub as well. Um, however, just to give you the context, every month I pretty much go into GitHub and look at the insights page and pull the numbers down. So it's literally with the exception of Nutix up till now, Everything's been on GitHub, so it's been pretty much an apples to apples type of comparison. And I've got this data now for, I guess, the last year and a half. So, so yeah. Are you, are you pulling this from Augur or where are you pulling it from? Right from GitHub. Yeah, those are ones you can get. Yeah, so they're the easy ones for me to get. Let's put it that way. I'm looking forward to more details from Augur, okay? Sean, yeah. something wrong here. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's, I was just curious. This, this is where, I, yeah, I just go here and I just go to literally uh, insights 
and change the pay rate to a month. And I do that for all these projects and I can get, you know, the biases are there, but they're neutral consistency, right? They're neutral enough. And so, you know, in the last 10, you know, in the last month, we've had 110 authors in this ecosystem, in this repo. That's a lot. Yeah. Like I say, so I think a lot of the things we've been doing have been effective and successful. And I've got um, uh, personal to do is to see if I can turn this into the, the talk I gave at Sohil into uh, lessons learned into a white paper over the holidays coming up. Yeah, a lot of people have little to do during the holidays. <laughs> we, have, we have aspirations anyhow. Yeah, well, at least uh, there's fewer meetings. <laughs> true, but as you can sort of see, um, if you look at the cloning behavior, mm -hmm. you know, each one day, in one day, there's like 241 unique cloners. That's right? pretty significant. That's significant. Yeah. And so we've got, you know, I think to a large extent, a certain amount of health built up now here. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, from where we started, which was, you know, a single company <laughs> wanting to, you know, share it out and we managed to get two other members and then built up the community from this. So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, interesting lessons potentially in here and what's made it work and what's made it not work. But just wanted to show you that so you could sort of see how it's been emerging. No, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we still work to do though. <laughs> Definitely yeah. still to do. So it's a question of, okay, where are the next things to tackle? You can say the CI badge turned out to be a very good checklist for the project and help establish the security team and a bunch of other things that I think are good practices. And so that's why the badging is a thing. Yeah. On the dashboard that you were showing, mm -hmm. um, when you've got the CI badging, you're just listing the stats, but I'm wondering, do you want to put the next level of breakdown there? That's a good idea. Like just, at, you know, so if you're badged, that's the quote unquote hundred percent, but then progress toward the next badge level. Yeah, or is, how, many, how, many of, or how many of each of the categories? Like I say, there's like these multiple areas like quality, you know, security and so forth. And putting the score based on that might make it make more sense to people. That makes sense. I think that all that data is available in the API too. Okay, good. It good. is. And we're, we're storing it. And I assume that David has the, the API is structuring it so we can tell which data point is with which thing. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that would be a good thing to do. Matt says he fixed the. Certainly doable. Okay. Yeah, and without Jessica on the call, I did, um, I, there was a separate thread related to just showing, we did a little unsweeping of some of our data in the latest release of Augur the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. So that she has, uh, we'd been doing a 60 day rolling average, which was, as things crossed yearly boundaries, making them look wrong for a group that she has looking at things very precisely. Okay. So we cleared that up, I think. Mm -hmm. Now I think in terms of the next, next things that we have on our agenda, just looking at what's, what's planned for the metrics release, um, I will put that in the chat. Many of these are largely defined for risk mm -hmm. already. So yeah, so the new, I'll just chime in here real quickly, Sean. So yeah. the, kind of the new look that you're seeing. Yeah, we've had to. So Sala has been doing work across all of these tabs so that they're more consistent and a Usala. little bit e Usala. Usala has been participating in the project recently. He was, they had kind of done this in the DNI working group. Okay. So, um, so basically you can kind of get a sense here that it's, it's more drop down driven, mm -hmm. less, less driven by, hold on. 
Yeah. Hey, I'm in a meeting. Sorry. So it's more drop down driven. Um, and so basically, as you were pointing out, Sean, everything that's green right now. Right, is released. Yeah, it's released. And then, um, uh, the CII best practices badge right there, like at the top mm -hmm. row. row yep. one. So that one, I think, has been merged and it's ready for release, right? Yeah. But that's how that reads. Yeah, we actually put together a pull request and a release for that last time. Yep. And then language declaration, language source proportion. Mm -hmm. These can be changed. I'm not sure where you're at on these. Do you um, have any that are in a pull request state right now? We have nothing to move from in progress depending. Okay. Right now, I would say that uh, in terms of the actual work, um, it's kind of a new and being that smell writing the metrics. Yeah, it looks like there's row 44. A ton of validation from Tenor from just the... And row 31 are the two? Yep. You know, I would say, so we have OSSI, OSI approved licenses and code complexity data. And so we just, I mean, I'm not, I don't have code complexity defined well enough to release, but OSI licenses, I think we've had a couple of discussions. Mm -hmm. We spent a good time on it last risk call, if memory serves, or was that a separate call? It might have been the last one. Yeah. I know we've had a good long call. We have a pretty very, we have a quite a clear understanding of OSI licenses. And, um, so Matt, we don't have a document, Matt Snell, for the OSI approved licenses, do we? A Google Doc? Um, I don't believe so, but it would be pretty easy to put together, I think. Let's, can we take just a second and do that real fast right now? Yes. Sure. Um, what I'll do is go. Whoever can get a doc going fast enough. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, what I'll do is I'll go into our GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you know what I can do is I can just copy this other one for CII best practices. Is somebody making a document or should I? I am. You I are. am making it. Don't forget to use the new template. I am using the same one. I basically all I did is copy and pasted the, uh, the one that we used for the metric we just looked at. Okay. And then just delete the content? <laughs> yes, of course. Right. <laughs> Look, we just, all the metrics are the same. That'll be so much simpler for everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right. Copy link done. I should be able to paste this in the Zoom chat. Boom. And by the time you click there, I'll be uh, a good way toward. I like this new format, by the way. Matt, compliments. Thanks. Um, so also put compliment Georg as well on this. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Blank templates. Uh, here we go. I can put one in there for you. Is it called OSSI license coverage? OSI. Uh, yeah, I, I said OSSI. OSI approved licenses. OSI approved licenses. And that's about it for the question. So for description, does anybody want to make a diplomatic way of stating why this matters or what yeah, why, do we, why do we care? Uh, we, we care because there's been a propagation of sort of faux uh, open source licenses that are not actually open source. 
but they are calling themselves open source. They, so, they put open in the word, therefore people think they're open source. Right. And that so, is problematic, yes. Basically. Heard, oh, somebody just took that. From somewhere, but it looks good to me. That's from OSI's OSI approval page. Yeah. Well done. Um, so in an effort to create transparency? Yeah. I hope you guys don't mind Zephyr being on a lot of the risk metrics because that's definitely my go-to. Well, like I say, Zephyr's trying to improve itself. It's been a pretty good position. So, a number of so a number of licenses are being propagated. Mm -hmm. That are not in fact, open source friendly. Is that right? Is that fair? Yeah. Yep. So like the non-OSI one for Zephyr, for instance, there is actually a goal. And we are actually um, trying to actually get to be 100% OSI approved. So. OK. So the fact that we're measuring it, and I can point to the three files um, would be very useful to me right now, because I can go and send them in front of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So is that fair in terms of the description right now? Yeah, that's it. Second. Okay. And they haven't yet internalized what we mean by implementation. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, we also may end up with the same way SPDX got. We may end up with pressure to um, put FSF <laughs> at some point, but I'm not advocating that one right now. Thank you. I think that would be a separate measure. Yeah, it would be, I think. Yeah. Uh, rather than saying non open source licenses, um, which, what can I suggest something here? Mm -hmm. You can just type it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I have a list of OSI approved licenses that's just in a JSON format. Would that be useful here with just short names and whether or not they are? Um, we might we'll just point, we just might want to point to the OSI site since it'll change over time. Uh, that's true. That's a good that, point. Is that something that could be cross-referenced or added as a, as a yeah. column or a link in the other license enumeration section of Augur? Possibly. Well, I just parsed the SPDX license list, really. Yeah, so just make it for there, just make a reference to the SPDX license list again. That'll change too. Uh, I'm just... How's that? This transparency helps projects make conscious decisions about whether or not to include licenses that are not approved by OSI. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My spelling. Oh, 
<laughs> no, thank you, necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Much appreciated, editors. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. On the type. Uh -huh. I'm going to move this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The JSON file for the SPX license list, is there an easy way to find it from the license list that is on the SPX website? Uh, it's certainly findable from the GitHub and links in the GitHub stuff in a second. Yeah, I think I have a link to it. Yeah, I okay. understand we have a link to it. I'm just on the he, he, he's, he's questioning us about our web page, which sucks. That's okay. <laughs> I have also a file that I, a Python file that I use to parse this into just like short names and whether or not they're approved. Would that be useful here? Yeah. I gotta find it first. <laughs> so Matt, is that part of the like data collection strategies? Do we? Yeah, I'd say so because um, I used it to get the JSON file we use in Augur now. Can you, Matt? Can you in that data collection strategies subsection on page two? Can you add some bullet points as to how you get this data without going into too much technical detail? Oh, okay. Yeah. Just yeah, I can put it down. Okay. Just you know, step one, step two, step three. Maybe that's where that can go. Yeah, there's no good patent. There's no good way of knowing it from spdx.org/licenses. Your your comments valid. Okay. Thanks for validating that I didn't miss anything. No, like I say, there's a data files, but that just is pointing you into GitHub license list data. So I don't know if you saw that. The data files link. Uh, yes, but it's also not the JSON file. Uh, it, points, it does point you to the JSON file. There's a JSON underneath. Second one down, HTML and JSON. Oh, here, JSON, I see. Okay. That's how to get there. Thank you. Now I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it's fine. It's, like I like to say, I. We, we need volunteers in SPDX who like to care about websites right now <laughs> because we've done too many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm So while, Matt, you're finishing that out, Sean. Sean. Yeah, I'm here. Is, the, is there a pull request for the CII best practices badge? Um, I, thought, or, I know there was, and my, I'm trying to recall if merged it last time or if uh, we did not. I know we there's a pull 
Northwest Outstanding Update Software Bill of Materials from Matt German Gray. And I think there was some stuff about that we were going to Okay. Um, well, I guess we can just look focus areas. Wonder if uh, that's the pull request I was supposed to make and did not make it. CIA best practices badge. Uh, no, it's in there. It looks like the only thing that Augur needs is um, is the database information. I, I may have missed what you were talking about. What are you talking? Well, hold on. So, Sean, the CIA best practices badge has been merged. Okay, I thought we did that in the, in the course of the meeting. Oh. Okay, so Matt, you had a different question. Uh, I was saying the OSI metric is almost available in Augur again. We just need to. Um, I just need to build uh, the way for it to read the new database structure. Yeah. I thought Carter modified the endpoint, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. This is getting to be too much detail. Too, too much detail, right? So I have to go in about two minutes. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Can, um, Matt, can you take this, the OSI approved licenses one, and make a pull request off of it? Sure. I'll do that now. Um, yeah, I might want to, I'm not sure about that. Output. Well, I mean, when we finish, that is, I'll do it as soon as we are done. Uh, we've also had Kevin Lombard join us, by the way. Hi, Kevin. Can I get rid of this a little bit? Oh, okay. Yeah. Do people have comments on this? Can we combine step one and step two? Where are you? In data collection strategies, just say um, compare the license JSON to the licenses found in the file. Compute percentage. Does that work, Matt? I'm confused as to what you mean. So you were going up uh, describing all the steps like save the file, load the file, and so on. And yeah. So I think we can summarize it more high level and leave the implementation details like moving a file from A to B to the developer. Okay. Um, and just say, hey, take this license JSON, compare the files you found scanning whatever mm -hmm. tool. And then step three is calculate the percentage of files that are on the license list versus not. That. That. One is to basically extract the list of licenses. There's something like this. First, extract licenses from the code base, same as in license coverage metric, then compare the list of licenses to the licenses JSON, and take note of how many licenses are approved by the OSI, and then third, calculate the percentage of files on the OSI license list. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
And okay. Then we can remove this sentence we had up here. Sure. Actually, yeah. Fewer words is better. Okay. I think we've got. Actually, this looks good. It's like, like again, my favorite kind of yeah. thing. Simple and straightforward, and tells a simple story. That's, so that's, that's useful, hopefully, to the projects. Yeah. yeah, I think we were for a while. Where our metrics were getting far too complex that they mm -hmm. weren't. They were harder to understand. They were. Okay. Um, I gotta go, Matt. If you could, right. people sign off, Matt. If you can get that into a pull request. Gotcha. Yep, I'd be happy to hang around long enough to accept it, or if you want to just uh, call the meeting and send me a note, I can do that too, whatever people feel like. Okay, I can stay on for a few more minutes, but then I've just been updating the minutes for today. Some of what we've been talking about, feel free to flesh them out though. Yeah. <laughs> um. And may I jump in and ask uh, the times of these meetings, how they are decided, if it would be possible to maybe shift some hours? I mean, uh, the risk meeting, I'm not quite sure how we came about the time, I think it was trying to fit the schedules of the people that were involved, and we have a lot, but if you'd like to be involved, Johan, you live, uh, what is it, uh, nine o'clock there now, or eight? Uh, nine o'clock, right? Now. Nine o'clock right now, yeah, it's getting kind of late in Sweden. We can look for a morning slot, maybe. Yeah. I don't think we've got anyone out of California that usually limits them. <laughs> Yeah. Um, show me this. How do we do this within a working group? Uh, just maybe do a doodle. Uh, do a doodle. Okay. The way we have changed uh, times of working groups in the past, like uh, Kate said, we send out a doodle asking, hey, who is interested in this working group? We are considering changing the time of the working group um, or and then we, we collect the feedback and decide afterwards which time we want to take. Yeah. 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Central Time appear to be the most popular times for the other meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and have the most other conflicts too. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, uh, 9 a.m. Central tends to have some options. 9 a.m. Central, not on Monday. I, I I can do that any Monday. You can do that? I can do that yeah. one on Monday too. Matt Snell, is that doable for you? I am. Um sure. On a Monday. Johan. I'm trying to figure out what that is Central European time. That's uh, cool. the, is that four? Yeah, that central yeah. that's four. Yeah, four. it's either th it's either three or four, right? Four o'clock. Is it four? Yeah, no, it's that, that, that should be doable. Okay. All right. Why don't we set these for 9 a.m.? Is um, Monday a good day? Monday's yeah. a good day. Yeah, other days are yeah. a bit yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so in two weeks, I think Kate and I, you and I are both in Japan. Yeah. Um, why, don't we uh, do it next, why don't we do it next week at that time instead? Yeah. Because yeah, well, then it's the holidays right after. So why don't we just aim for the 9 a.m. next week instead and yeah. keep them going. I will, I will be giving the final exam next week, but I can uh, let's see 9 a.m. I think this, this meeting meets bi-weekly, right? It has, but Kate yeah, is but suggesting juggling it, especially with the... Oh, gotcha. I'm just going okay. to look at my exact calendar. I could actually, I could, I could do 9 a.m. I might be on a phone, but I can do 9 a.m. on Monday the 9th. Okay. And then get back into the cadence after the Christmas break yeah. before we get to Chaos Con. Yeah. 
I think um, do we want to try to even bother to have a, I, we don't really want to have a meeting after that really this year. No, I, I think it's, you know, it's going to have to be a secret. New Year's Eve are painful days. So yeah. Do you want me to change the time on the website or do we want to wait and send no. something out on the mailing list first? Kevin, if you wouldn't mind changing the time on the website, changing the time on the official calendar and sending out a notice that our next meeting will be on December 9th. And is then, that right? At, and then uh, is it going to be central and it'll begin again. That's the, a good risk, thing. <laughs> the, re, the risk group will take a hiatus and I we want to begin again then on the 6th of January. That sounds perfect. Ninth to the I get this a couple meetings before chaos con. Yeah. I've added that pull request now. Excellent. Okay. Well, okay. So begin, begin again on the 6th. Yep. And, and we are doing nine central. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next week and then the 6th. That is correct. Okay. Will do. All right. Thanks, Sounds everyone. good. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 See ya.